<laughs> well, I mean, I think the first point to make is that African leaders appear to have lost their dignity. And because they have lost their dignity, they are being treated in the most shabby manner. And they are being treated in the most shabby manner to their own applause. I am embarrassed by this so-called meeting between the presidents of Nigeria and Kenya with the U.S. Secretary of State. It's embarrassing. Now, one, since Joe Biden came to power, he has been all over the world meeting his colleagues, foreign ministers, and so on, of smaller countries, countries which don't have the endowment of Nigeria. Nigeria is a major country. It has a population in excess of 200 million. That is what Nigeria is. Nigeria exploits 2 million barrels of oil a day. Nigeria is a major player in world affairs. Anthony Blinken is not talking to the Nigerian foreign minister. He's talking to the president. You understand? It makes me sick. Quite apart from that, quite apart from that, Blinken has been all over the world, traveling all over the world, meeting people, discussing American foreign policy and so on. When it comes to Africa, he says, no, I'm not traveling. We'll do Zoom call because I'm afraid of COVID-19. What rubbish. Is Africa the epicenter of the pandemic? We are not. His own country is topping the world in terms of the figures. And then when it comes to Africa, he will not even travel to meet the heads of state. He will do Zoom call with them, and they are happy. Unbelievable. You know, put that aside. What right has the United States of America got to be defining who Africa's friends are? Africa's friends will be determined by the African people themselves, not by the United States of America. In the days when we were struggling against apartheid, in the days when we were struggling for national liberation and so on, where was the United States of America? The United States of America worked against our interests. The United States of America worked for the colonialists, worked for the racists, worked for the apartheid. How dare them turn around and tell us who our friends should be or who our friends are? They should listen to Nelson Mandela. When they made noises about the relationship that was being established between South Africa you know, after apartheid and Cuba, Nelson Mandela told them in plain words that they have no right to tell them who their friends were. And that South Africans are keenly aware of the fact that when they were in the trenches, Cuba was there with them, the US was not there with them. This is Nelson Mandela. And this holds true even today. The United States of America would not tell us who our friends are. We know our friends. We know our problems. We have the capacity to solve our own problems. We may need friends, but we need friends who understand the conditions in which we are. We need friends who are not going to impose their culture, their, 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 their understanding of the world and so on, on us. Why? Anthony Blinken is telling us that, that, that we should be wary of the Chinese. Let the United States give you a dollar. It comes with conditions. You understand? It comes with conditions which makes you their surrogate. China brings aid without those conditions. China doesn't have a superior attitude when it is dealing with African states. China doesn't have a superior attitude when it's offering aid. China doesn't want to count uh, the number of newspapers you have in your country before they give you aid. China gives aid because the people of Africa, the people of Asia, and the people of Latin America need to make advancements in enhancing their industries, in meeting their, their social obligations as well. That's why China gives aid. So Chinese aid is substantially different from aid from the West, and we need to recognize that. 
In any case, whether we are going to take Chinese aid or not would not be decided by the United States of America. It ought to be decided by the African people themselves. Look, there's a certain level of anti-Chinese hysteria which is being funneled by the West. And unfortunately, many people in Africa, including some of our intellectuals, and even some people on the left, are buying into that useless anti-Chinese hysteria. Yes, there are Chinese in the mining areas in Ghana. True. Illegal mining is destroying our environment. It is true. Those Chinese in the mining areas, are they representatives of the Chinese state? What is their connection with the Chinese state? What is their connection with Chinese foreign policy? None. These are individuals who have come here with our own help. How do they come here? We grant them the visas. When the excavators are moving to the forest areas, don't our security people see the excavators? Our chiefs don't not, 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 not complacent in, in the degradation of our environment and so on. Why blame Chinese? Why don't you blame yourself? We have made this possible. We set up anti galamse squads and so on to go and stop Galamse. It turns out that all the major political parties, activists of all the major political parties are involved. Is that done by the Chinese? That is not by the Chinese. That is our own error. That is our own inability to enforce our law, to enforce our regulations. You understand what I'm saying? Why? As we sit here, a couple of months ago, a Ghanaian committed murder in the United States of America. Everybody knew a Ghanaian killed his wife, killed his American wife in the United States of America. How do you hold all Ghanaians responsible for the, for the criminal act of individuals? As we sit here, Ghanaians are engaged in the narcotics trade. They are selling cocaine to other capitals. People are taking the cocaine. They are getting demented and so on. Do you blame Ghana for it? You can't blame Ghana for it. And if you can't blame Ghana for the individual criminal acts of its citizens, why do you blame China for the individual criminal acts of its citizens? So we ought to be very careful. Why? One of the African revolutionary leaders who said that any time you're doing something, I think it was Thomas Sankara who said, that any time the African is doing something and the West is applauding, you have to stop and think. Because you must be doing something wrong. You understand? So when they meet our leaders, these leaders, when they meet them, and they say these things and so on, we should be careful. In any case, what was all this about, this meeting? The gravamen of the discussions at this meeting was about moving the U.S. Africa Command to Africa. <laughs> it was about establishing a U.S. military base in Africa. That's what they were discussing. And I was so embarrassed, I felt so disgraced by the Nigerian head of state and the kinds of things he said. I am embarrassed by Buhari. Listen. When Buhari was campaigning to replace uh, Good Luck Jonathan, what did he tell the people of Nigeria? That he is a former general, an astute general, and that if he got power, he will be able to stop the operations of Boko Haram. Is that not the promise he made? Now the same Buhari is telling us, and saying, hey, I raised my hand, we can't fight Boko Haram. America, come and fight Boko Haram for us. He should be leaving office. He should be leaving office. He has not fulfilled his promise to the Nigerian people. In any case, if Nigeria, a giant in Africa, Nigeria is a giant in Africa, if Nigeria cannot deal with Boko Haram and has to go and beg Anthony Blinken to bring soldiers into, into Lagos and Abuja and other places to fight Boko Haram, then what, what would other countries do? What would Gambia do and so on? We are walking back into the embrace of our slave masters. We are walking back into the embrace of our new colonial and colonial oppressors and exploiters. That is what we are doing. And these African leaders are doing that without blinking an eye, without any shame. What an embarrassment. Look, 
Some time ago, it was in the early 2000s, if you all remember, the U.S. president was visiting Senegal. And to my surprise and horror, the U.S. embassy actually issued a statement saying that African leaders who want a photo opportunity with their president, they should go to Senegal. And to my horror, African leaders started jumping onto aircrafts to go and take photographs with U.S. president in, in, in Dakar. Look at our leaders. Photo opportunity. Our leaders are looking for photo opportunity. Look at our leaders acting like babies, like day nursery boys and girls. So embarrassing. Africa will determine its own friends. Africa will determine its own path to development. Africa will take instructions from nobody. Africa will take instructions from nobody about who our friends should be and who our friends should not be. Africa will take no instructions from nobody about what our development pattern should be. And the African leaders who want to act as house niggers must understand that the African people will not allow that to happen. We need leaders in Africa who have a vision, a vision of prosperity for the African people, a vision which deepens the independence of the African continent, a vision which unites the African continent in a struggle against poverty, in a struggle against underdevelopment, in a struggle for prosperity. Leaders who are lying prostrate before the forces of imperialism, begging for soldiers to come and deal with insurgencies in their countries and so on, are no leaders at all. And they will be rejected by the masses of Africa. They will be replaced by the forces in Africa, the forward-looking forces in Africa, who want to build an Africa without a bomb, an Africa without a foreign military base, an Africa capable of standing on its own amongst the continents of this world. I'm embarrassed by Buhari and the Kenyan leader and, and the, 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 the manner in which they have degraded us and stampled on our dignity. It's embarrassing. 